We are in the magnificent Market Street Gallery in downtown Celebration. And my name is Kim Hawk. I'm super thrilled because we have former Congresswoman Pat Schroeder with us today. So what I'd like to do, Pat, I read your book. So this book is called 24 Years of Housework and the Place is Still a Mess. This is one of the best books I have ever read in my entire life. And I'm not blowing smoke because it has humor, it has intrigue, and it's all a true story. So Pat, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to maybe just maybe touch on some of these sure. things and you expand upon them. So if I understand correctly, um, you went to Harvard and got your law degree there. You actually graduated from the University of Minnesota in three years because you wanted to start life, I think you said with a capital L for life. With your law degree, you were one of 15 women in the freshman class of over 550 people that year. You want to tell us a little bit of a story on how they welcomed you there? <laughs> Welcome is kind of a funny word. <laughs> I, I, the, the dean was then Erwin Griswold, and he did not want women. But I learned something very early on, which was terrific. He had all of us to dinner one night and he said, I voted against your coming here. I just want to know why you're going to, you came here because, so we're all sitting there, you know, white knuckle trying to think of something profound to say. And this wonderful young woman from, from Los Angeles in my class said, I'm here because I couldn't get in at Yale. And he went nuts. <laughs> he said, no, Yale's always taken more. Uh, no, that's not right. And, and that's when I learned how you really respond to this. But he went on to say he was so sure we'd never use it that he let in that many more men after they counted how many more women. So that was also handy because whenever some guy would say, do you realize you're taking the spot from a man? And I could say, maybe I got it for you. I mean, you could be one of the 15. <laughs> That's so great. And that's where you met Jim. So Harvard, if nothing else, was a wonderful place. You met your amazing husband, who is a resident of Celebration and is adored as well. Um, a couple of things in the book that I was reading about when you served on the American uh, Services Committee, right? Uh, you had some interesting stories go along with that. You want to share some of those? Absolutely. Well, as a young girl, I got my pilot's license when I was like 16, so I knew how to fly. And I knew that everything I cared about in Congress, they were going to say, no, 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 no. We have to have money for the war because the war was going on then. That was Vietnam. So I thought, well, I'll be on Armed Services Committee. I want to see where all this money's going. That's when we discovered the $600 toilet seats and other things, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. But they had never had a woman and they had never had an African American on the committee. And the then chairman, was from New Orleans, Louisiana, a real bow weevil. And for the first time, they overrode his veto. He vetoed both my coming on and a young African-American male from Oakland, California, Ron Dones. So we got on, we didn't know he'd vetoed us. We didn't know they'd overridden. We walk in the first day thinking, oh my, look at us, here we are. And he just goes off like a bull elephant. You know, it's like, this is terrible. I can't believe it. We have no power anymore. The power we still have is how many seats are at the dais. And these two people are only worth half of what the rest of you are. So I've given them one chair. <laughs> so, you know, some of my friends used to introduce me saying it was the only half-assed thing I did when I was in Congress, which I, which I don't think is really true. But nevertheless yes for two years we did that we made lots of noise about it to the press which nobody could believe we did and then uh, luckily the next year they changed the rules so that we now voted for the chairman it wasn't who outlived everybody and he was the first one deposed <laughs> so we got our revenge after two years but it was two years of uh, Oh my gosh. Well, and thank you for sitting gracefully cheek to cheek with, your, <laughs> with the gentleman from uh, California. Some of the other things that I've, I've known about you and, and read about in this book, I believe you might have been in jail for an hour. You want to tell us a little bit about what happened there? Oh yes, I used to spend time picketing the South African Embassy back when, um, you know, they had jailed our dear, wonderful, wonderful hero. and. 
the the other exciting part of that, which is really embarrassing, yes, I got out of jail and we went to court and, you know, they never, it, it was the same old, same old, you know. They, they, but anyway, when Nelson Mandela finally got out and it looked like they were going to put the first election in South Africa, I was so excited. So we, we were asked to go and I was asked to go. And it was Maudie Thursday, and I really, sorry, I'm a congregationalist, I never knew what Maudie Thursday was. So somebody said, oh, you ought to go over to Bishop Tutu's church, because Maudie Thursday will be a big thing. And so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I kind of went in the back and sat in the back with some of my colleagues that had gone with me, John Lewis being one of them. Um, and all of a sudden, Tutu says, we're not starting until these people come up here and I can wash their feet. And I'm like, no, I cannot go up there and have Bishop Tutu wash my feet. I mean, there are things I got, but that I can't do. And he was absolutely insistent. He was not going to start. And so I may have gone to jail, but all of that, he said, I never thought I could vote in my entire life. And because of people like this, I'm going to get to vote and I'm going to wash their feet. <laughs> so he did. But it was amazing. Oh, Pat, that is a great, that is a great story. And you know, we were talking about uh, the many people that you've met as you've traveled around the world and had a great influence, you know, in, in celebration in Colorado, in the United States, the world, this actual planet. And uh, there's even been kings that have never shaken a hand of a woman at the age he was i think he was 68 and you were the first woman he ever shook hands but why don't you talk about some of the other people that you feel that really uh, is a great thing in your life well and i'll be on the armed services committee <laughs> we spent a lot of time obviously <laughs> in the middle east because first of all there was the uh, the war uh, that went on between israel and egypt so but we also went to Saudi Arabia, and <laughs> King Faisal was not exactly happy. I remember Kissinger calling me and saying, couldn't you just not go there? Just, we'll pick you up later or something, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm on the committee. I'm part of it. What, what, what are you telling me not to do? Anyway, we went, and uh, it, it was really fascinating. When you would see the newsreels that would be on Saudi Arabian television, we were cut out. Oh my I was God. not there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was, as I say, I tried to do things, but I, I don't think we ever really made a dent in South, oh. <laughs> in South Arabia. They still have a lot of problems for women there, I'm very sad to say. Yeah. Well, you definitely planted some seeds, and so obviously we've seen with uh, Nelson Mandela being let out of jail and uh, election and stuff. So a lot of good things can come out of all that hard work you put into the place. Speaking of hard work, so the title, for those who haven't met Pat yet, she's very witty, she's very funny, and she is very clever. Uh, and so when she says 24 years of housework, it's because she ran undefeated. She was in Congress for 24 years straight. And that is quite an accomplishment. And one of the stories that's in the book, I believe, talks about, was it the FBI that broke into your house? You want to want to talk about being our house being broken in? Oh, I'm so old, you have to remember <laughs> that the first time I won and ran was 1972. And that was Nixon and that was J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah. Wow. And my campaign slogan was, she wins, we win. He was sure that was a communist slogan. Who knew? I mean, I, he's getting all of this stuff, and he thought that the peace symbol was a chicken. We'll figure out the rest of it. Symbol, and on and on and on. So anyway, he had all of these house break-ins, and they were weird because you got all done, and, and, and nothing appeared to be missing. You know, so uh, you know, I kind of thinking, what is going on? Anyway, several months later, after I had gotten elected. There was a newspaper from Denver that we got every day, and the front page paper about this guy had been caught breaking into houses in Denver. His name was Timothy Redfern, I will never forget it. And he said, you can't arrest me because I work for the FBI and I break in for the Schroeder house. So it was a break into the Schroeder house. And I'm like, oh, all right. Now, and it was interesting, so I asked to see my FBI file, which was 
like this. And it had stuff that if he'd walked into my office, we would have handed him. I mean, what he had done is taken things like bumper stickers, you know, brochures, um, and, and written this stuff up like, oh, she belongs to the Vietnam Veterans Against the War. She belongs to the League of Women Voters. Oh my goodness, you know, this is terrible. Um, yeah, no, no, no. So, yeah, he really was, they were also paying my husband's barber. And he would show up every night for dinner. And I kept like, you know, like, why are you here? I just came by to see how everything is, he'd say. You know, <laughs> it was really strange. So, yeah. No, it was, seeing that FBI file was really blood curdling. Can you think, how much money did they spend <laughs> on all this insanity? Yes, yes. <laughs> you have done so many amazing things in Congress, and I'd like you to talk about some of the ones that you really want to everybody to know is your legacy, but I know you have protected abused children. Uh, you have put the Family and Medical Leave Act together, and the list goes on and on. But instead of me telling you that, why don't you share some of this, please? Well, part of the reason I wanted to be on armed services was military families. Everybody was on there interested in the hardware, but nobody was ever interested in software. <laughs> So I did a lot with military families. I did a lot. It never made sense to me that we treated them entirely different than we did State Department families. And yet they all work for the same flag. So, you know, so I worked a lot on that. I worked a lot on all sorts of family issues. I mean, we're just, we're still so behind everybody on family issues. It's amazing. And on women's issues, when I first got to Congress, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we lived in Virginia where the house was where we bought. And of course, we also lived in Colorado. Colorado was very progressive. I show up to close the deal on the house and they said, no, you're of childbearing age. I said, excuse me? <laughs> and they said, no, no, no. This is Virginia, honey. We don't have that liberal stuff out here. So yeah, it, it was, I had thought that I could just go to the house closing and didn't you know bother my husband to come and it was like no you cannot sign it and it was the same just trying to even so we did a lot on equal credit for women because we finally got that passed and then would you believe once we passed it they only did it for shopping and we had to call them in and say no 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 we really want equal credit for women for more things than shopping but it, you know it was it was slow and hard, <laughs> but it, we finally got some of those things done. Oh, thank you for doing that for all of us. I remember growing up, my mom was a broker, realtor, and about the same time you were going into Congress. And I remember her telling the story about going into buying a car, and they wouldn't allow her to buy the car with cash mm -hmm. unless my father was there. Mm -hmm. And so all the social reform that you've done for so many of us, thank you, thank you, big <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Pat. That's, that's what people have to do. Yeah. You know, we all have to stretch and try new things. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to encourage everybody out there to stretch and read. This, like I said, is my favorite book, 24 Years of Housework, and the place is still a mess. <laughs> still a mess. <laughs> but we're going to love each other, and we're going to make sure that uh, we support each other and just keep moving forward. Right, Pat? And we're going to come here and shop. Yes. We're going to come to Market Street Gallery and shop. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pat. You. Appreciate you. But once again, we're at Market Street Gallery. We encourage you to shop local. We encourage you to read local. And we encourage you to stay in touch through the Celebration Florida Facebook page. Once again, Kim Hawk, have a great day. Make sure that you subscribe and like so that we can continue to give you up-to-date information on all things that are going around the 25-mile radius of Cinderella's Castle because this is truly a magical place to live.